universities, including Harvard, NYU, Rutgers, Columbia, and the University of Washington. In 2010, she hit the world of e-books as the marketplace moved to a new publisher, and Laura came out as Christopher Morgan, best-selling writer of Musclebound and other gay male erotica. Together with her wife, Karen Taylor, Laura has written a ritually correct leather Passover Seder. Yes! <laughs> Laura is featured in the collections Writing Below the Belt, Conversations with Erotic Authors by Michael Rowe, and The Burning Pen, Sex Writers on Sex Writing by M. Christian. Her, pre her Preston short story, uh, I'm sorry, her short story, The Man with the Phoenix Tattoo, won the John Preston Short Fiction Award. The story was originally published in Take Me There, Tristan Termino's 2011 Lambda Literary award-winning collection of transgender erotica. Laura was also a columnist for Girlfriends Magazine and Alt.com, editor of Bad Boy and Bi Curious, and a regular contributor to the Sand MU Topia Guard Guardian from 1993 to 2000. Laura plans more novels in the Marketplace series as well as delving into other genres. All of her available works can be found at her website, lauraantonio.com. Laura Antonio. I'm old, so I've done a lot. <laughs> so uh, this year, I have uh, two new books already. One of them is No Safe Words, which is the first marketplace book written by other people. It is a collection of marketplace fan fiction. And it has Melina on the cover. So if you keep seeing naked pictures of Melina uh, on the screen here, that's because she's on the cover of my book, which is because I asked her before she had morning coffee. <laughs> and if you ever want to get something from Melina, ask her for something in the morning. The other uh, new book that I have this year is The Killer Wore Leather. This is my first mystery novel. It is my yeah. first book with Cleus Press of, uh, of much renown. Um, and uh, The Killer Wore Leather is a comedy murder mystery that is set at a leather com a contest called, sorry, I need both hands for this, the Mr. and Ms. Global Leather and Boot Black <laughs> contest. <laughs> And only people in the scene get the and boot black. Uh, which is very funny because last weekend was International Mr. Leather, uh, which I attended, and the boot blacks were accidentally left off the program. Ooh. Life imitating art. Anyway, so it's a comedy murder mystery because why? It's set in our real leather community. <laughs> so uh, have any of you heard me read from this before? A few of you? Yeah. Um, because I could start from chapter one or I could start from later on. Later on? Go to the end so we can find out who done it. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Let's start with the meet and greet. Everyone's been yeah. to a meet and greet. <laughs> this one is at The Shaft, which is the local leather bar. By the way, that's an in-joke. The Shaft is the leather bar in the Marketplace books. So in reality, it takes place in the Marketplace. <laughs> Chris Parker just walks right through. But no one knows. <laughs> so, at the meet and greet, everything ran late as usual. One of the judges missed the bus. One of the contestants had stage fright and threw up. The owner of the bar wanted more stage time to make announcements for upcoming events and promote the new cocktail they'd made up to honor their contestant, Jason Asada. Earl Stemple, the producer, nixed the Asada Colada, <laughs> <laughs> Offering discounted drinks with the name of a contestant on them seemed against the spirit, if not the letter of the rules. The MC then proceeded to mispronounce half the names of everyone introduced, and told rambling, misfired jokes of dubious taste, even for a crowd of kinky people. Asking whether George Santos, the judge and current Senor Cuero, representing Spanish-speaking title holders, was in the country legally, 
almost made Earl knock the idiot off the stage personally. <laughs> Luckily, the hisses and boos seemed to get through, and the MC quickly moved on and continued to stumble his way through the necessary formalities. I thought he was funny, said Max Steele, holding out a hand for a fresh drink. This is last year's Mr. Global Leather. Paul, his slave boy, put a cold bottle of beer into that hand and then replaced his hands behind his back. He was dressed in tight leather shorts, lace-up boots, a narrow black leather collar, and a chest harness. In contrast, Mac was in leather from cap to boots. The judges were all clumped together, waiting for the sponsorship announcements to finish so they could go out and do their mandatory socializing. He didn't know how to work the crowd, sniffed Chava Nagila. <laughs> Taller than Mac, in her four-inch heels, Kava was in full drag regalia. Her beaded amber-colored gown had a tall lace collar and shot off gold lines of reflected light every time she turned. She was drinking a cocktail to match her radiant ensemble, with flecks of gold floating in the martini glass. I could have done better. There's a reason why you leather people need drag queens to run your shows. You have all the style and charisma of a discount sofa bed. <laughs> Better not let anyone hear you say that, rumbled Lord Laertes. A burly man, his bulk was emphasized by his own costume. Brown leather trousers were tucked into cross-gartered fur boots with some kind of horn attached to each tip pointing up. <laughs> a broad belt was hung with a coiled whip on one side and a long-handled flogger on the other, its tails made of thick umber moose hide. A red pirate shirt was open over his hairy chest, and over that was a vest decorated with strips of brown and black fur. A medallion in the shape of a crescent moon crossed with a double-bladed axe around his neck proclaimed him to be the Khan of the Eastern Kingdoms. <laughs> I don't know how I make this shit up. <laughs> People are going to think you're prejudiced against the scene. He wiped beer foam off his goatee with the back of his hand after draining a mug and slapped his free hand against his thigh. A small, delicate-looking woman came over to him and made a stylized curtsy or bow, and he thrust the empty mug in her direction. She placed it on the palm of her hand and bowed again and asked, May this one fetch another for the con? <laughs> <laughs> Mac guffawed. Jesus Christ, you're the last one to talk about being prejudiced, Lord Khan, whatever your real name is. I always knew you Zodians were weird, but police. Only a moron wouldn't think you're going out for your fellow weirdos. Behind him, his slave Paul cried out, Khan! <laughs> William Shatner imitation. <laughs> oh, like this never happened to you. <laughs> Mac laughed even harder as Lord Laertes turned his back on him. The Zodians have been in the scene for over 20 years, which is more than anyone could say for you, said Mistress Ravenfire, Ms. Global Leather. I need a drink, muttered the other woman on the judging panel, a short, bespectacled woman wearing a Hawaiian shirt <laughs> under her leather vest. She stalked over to the bar by herself. Try to get a sense of humor while you're there. <laughs> Worst judges ever, Boy Jack texted to Boy Jack. Roger that, Boy Jack responded. <laughs> you know, they're the volunteers. <laughs> now there's a reporter on the scene, Nancy Nichols. She's named after my mother-in-law. Anyway. <laughs> so. You're not all into that master-slave stuff? Nancy Nichols asked, curious, despite her continued reservations. This was turning out to be one of the strangest things she'd ever seen, and that included the evening she spent with a group of chicken fanciers. What? Breeding them, not fucking them. Those people were as passionate about something as tiny as an array of little feathers on the back of a chicken's foot as these people were about their costuming. These kinky people had philosophies, or delusions masquerading as philosophies. It was hard to tell. The little pamphlet she'd been given at the door was quite illuminating. The word consensual appeared a lot. 
Oh, Lordy, no, said the small but well-shaped man in front of her. His dark brown hair was buzz cut almost to the scalp, and he wore a delicate chin beard and mustache groomed to exacting precision. It outlined his jaw nicely, and he had terrific smooth skin and dark green eyes to die for. He was wearing what looked like a motorcycle cop's ensemble in black and blue leather, complete with tall boots, cap, and badge. All in all, he was a damn pretty man, lacking only a few more inches to make him gorgeous. He had introduced himself as Kelly Manning. You'll find most people into the leather BDSM scene are into fetishes, like clothing, role-playing, sex games, you know, fun things they do to spice up their relationships. The folks into that me, master, you, slave stuff, they're actually a minority. And a lot of them actually don't do it uh, much when they're not out, like at these things, showing off. He grinned with disarming ease, showing off a slight chip in a front tooth. Nancy was half relieved that there was something to mar his clean-cut prettiness. So how do you know? How do you know who's into what? She cast a glance around the cavernous bar and saw people dressed in everything from jeans and sneakers to the now ubiquitous assless chaps and boots. There were more cops and soldiers than she could count. And then there was the person in the fox costume. <laughs> there were also a few people in kilts, bunches of men dressed in barbarian splendor, accompanied all by girlfriends wearing draped layers of pastel cloth. But the vast majority were just in New York City standard, all black. There was a lot of fair amount of skin on parade, bare chests on the men, corsets on the women, and while some of them appeared weirder than others, most of them looked fairly, well, normal. Just people out for a night at the bar, drinking, hanging out, shouting, exchanging phone numbers. Lots of people hugged when they saw each other, like normal people. Mm -hmm. Clearly, they were normal people. <laughs> Nancy found it disturbingly comfortable. Well, you don't know, he said, until you ask. But you could always get a few hits, like if you see someone wearing a collar around their neck with a lock, pretty good bet they're someone's slave. And the guys into the, with the fur vests, they're uh, Zionists. They're sort of heavily into role-playing, although uh, don't let anyone hear you say that. <laughs> uh, they live the Zodian lifestyle. <laughs> it's uh, based on some old science fiction books, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly's voice was pleasant on the ear as he pointed out more examples. And then you got the rubber guys. One of the other contestants is Mr. Palm Springs Rubber. He's like 80 or something. <laughs> That's all about clothing and texture. They're not into role-playing. We also have a few guys into the whole furry thing. I don't know how they wound up here, except we pretty much welcome anyone. I don't know any of them except the guy in the, front, in the fox suit. He's kind of fun. I might hook up with him. <laughs> and you? Nancy asked. What are you into? Oh, I'm strictly reality-based. <laughs> I'm kinky, sure, but it doesn't rule my life. I like leather, I like the contest, I like volunteering, working in the community, going to events, I like playing around, having fun. Uh-huh, and you were. Nancy glanced at the medallion around his neck, now used to knowing what to look for to figure out who these people were. She did a double take. Kelly grinned. Yep. I was Ms. Global Leather 2003. Since then, I transitioned. I thought it would be fun to see if I could win again. <laughs> We're getting closer to that day. <laughs> Nancy blinked and tried to form another question, but then Kelly looked up at someone approaching and winked at her. Got a dash. Time to impress the judges. <laughs> he used to be a woman? Nancy thought, her mind quickly making up a brand new story. Hey, maybe she could get a couple of stories out of this stupid event. She began to forgive her editor for the assignment. This was more than just spanking and fashion. This was sex changes, rivalries, bizarre in-group politics. Visions of a series began to tempt her. Mm -hmm. Notes from the leather underground. No, no, sex and longing in the West Village. Yeah, no. The Kinky Among Us. <laughs> Nancy moved through the crowd on a renewed mission. <laughs> so if you want to talk to the authors, we're all like clustered over here. Um, uh, D.L. King has, has books for sale. I only have, unless my wife arrived, <laughs>